Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk about the tear film, but specifically we're going to talk about two tests that you need to know about for your NCLE examination, namely breakup time test and the Shermer test. But before we do that, um, if these videos are helpful, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, and then send me your comments as you watch it. If you have any questions or if there's any future topics you'd like for me to cover, please go ahead and add those to the comments section. I'll be sure to reply. So the tear film, before we talk about the breakup time test and the Shermer test, we need to kind of um, go over the tear film. What is it? What is its function? To give us a full understanding. So the tear film has, serves three, four primary functions. The number one thing that it does is it's the primary refractive surface, meaning it's the first refractive surface of the eye. To refract means to bend. So when, when we talk about the refractive medium of the eye, we're talking about the cornea, we're talking about the crystalline lens. These are, these are lenses of the eye. But we're also talking about the tear film because when light enters through the eye, um, it passes through air, which in a vacuum we know has an index of refraction of one. But the tear film is assigned an index of refraction of 1.34, meaning that when light enters the tear film of the eye, which rests in front of the cornea, is actually going to bend light. Now, we don't necessarily assign a dioptric value to the tear film because it's not like it's adding a lot of strength, but where we would mainly notice it is if somebody's tear film wasn't complete, if it was blotchy, if it was, um, if people's eyes were drying out, they would notice a difference in the quality of the refraction. Meaning that's why like if you're staring at a computer screen for a while, you have to blink um, to spread the tear film out so that light enters at a smooth medium, a smooth refractive surface. So primary function of the tear film is to refract light as the, the first surface, the primary surface. The tear film also serves to uh, provide a moist environment for the cornea, uh, for your conjunctiva, that, that membrane that rests in front of the anterior of the sclera. Uh, the tear film also is important in that it provides nutrition for the cornea, right? Because remember, the cornea is a living tissue, but it's avascular, meaning it has no vessels in it. So the cornea needs to receive its nutrition through the tear film, through vessels that end in loops around the limbus of the um, cornea, kind of the corneal scleral limbus. There's vessels that feed the periphery of the cornea, but it also receives nutrition from detergestants, the pumping action of the endothelial layer of the cornea. But to, to refresh, uh, the tear film serves as the primary refractive surface, the first refractive surface. It gives nu nutrition for the cornea. It provides um, a moist environment for the anterior of the eye and it also washes away bacteria, it washes away any type of infiltrates. So the tear film has a lot of um, important benefits for the eye that you may not even consider, right? So very important the tear film, but now we're going to talk about what is the anatomy of the tear film if you will, right? Because the tear film has three layers, three distinct layers. The most external or the most anterior layer of the tear film is the lipid layer. The lipid layer is produced by the meibomian glands, something you want to remember for your NCLE exam. And know that the function of the lipid layer is to prevent the evaporation of the tear film, right? Because, and that makes sense. So think of it as the most external layer is made of like fats, lipids, and that's preventing that water from evaporating. So if you, you can really think through these, the middle layer of the tear film is the aqueous layer or the watery layer. That is 90% of the tear film, right? This has your proteins, your salts, different enzymes. It, it provides the nourishment for the cornea. The most posterior or the closest to the corneal surface is called the mucoid layer. The mucoid layer is produced by goblet cells in the conjunctiva. Also, I didn't mention, but the aqueous or watery layer is produced by the lacrimal glands. You're going to want to know that. So remember the three layers of the tear film from most external or most anterior would be lipid, aqueous, and mucoid or mucus uh, layer. So we know the functions of the tear film. We know the layers of the tear film. But now we have to talk about the two important tests. So we have the breakup time test 
and the Shermer test. So with breakup time tests, I want you to associate that with quality. We're going to be associating the Shermer test with quantity of tears. So one mnemonic device is, you know, breakup time. You think it's time to break up. You know, if you're talking about a relationship with someone, maybe you break up with someone because they are not quality, right? So just a, a simple way to kind of remember that. But the breakup time test is performed with the fluorescein dye, right? So it's a yellowish green dye that's in the eye. You're gonna use a slit lamp with a diffuse Diffuse illumination, so it's a broad beam of light. You're gonna use a cobalt filter, and what you're doing is you're asking the patient to blink, then immediately after the blink, you're gonna start that clock, and you wanna see how long it takes under a low magnification until you notice a dry spot in their tear film. Once you notice a dry spot on their tear film, the test stops, and you record that as the time. So what you wanna know is that a breakup time less than 10 seconds is contraindicative or it's it's um, against contact lens wear. It's saying maybe this person may not be a suitable candidate for count contact lenses. Not saying that they couldn't always have a low breakup time and still wear contact lenses, but as a fitter, it's something that you would consider. So if it's 10 seconds or less, you're really gonna be uh, a little more so concerned about their breakup time and the quality of their tear film, right? So you're making sure that they don't have a Mabomian gland dysfunction where the lipids aren't sealing that tear film in, where it's just evaporating too easy. There's a, there's a bunch of different issues that someone can have with their tear film. But what you want to know is breakup time quality. So on the other spectrum, we have the Shermer test. Shermer test is going to talk about the quantity of the tear film. The Shermer test started in, in 1903, so it's been around for a long time. You can use a 35 millimeter strip of filter paper. You're gonna tuck five, about five millimeters of it under the lower lid, and then you're just gonna wait. It's a five minute test, and you wanna see how much of that filter paper has been moistened by the patient's tear film within that five minutes. Less than 15 millimeters of moistened uh, filter paper is gonna be contra contraindicative of contact lens wear. It's a funny word, but yeah, so, you wouldn't uh, consider someone for contact lenses if they have a really low result on their Shermer test. Kind of much like the breakup time test. You want to make sure that they're falling within a normal limit so you can, you can move, or move them along, usher them through the contact lens fitting process because these would be concerns for a new wearer or an existing wearer. You know, we have all different types of contact lenses, um, you know, starting with hard lenses where you're really relying on the pumping action and you know you had to fenestrate or drill holes in the lenses even to allow for the exchange of the tear film um, to modern soft contact lenses, you know hydrophilic lenses which love water and they have a high water content up to you know 90% water. You know the issue with soft lenses is um, they do great and, and maintain a, a moist environment for your eye and they stay wet. But the downside is the optical quality of them isn't that of like even PMMA or rigid gas permeable lenses. So there's a lot to consider with the tear film. Um, main thing is know that quantity, we're talking about Shermer test, quality is the breakup time test. Um, thank you guys for watching. If this has been helpful, please again, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know that it was helpful. Give me a thumbs up or maybe write a comment below and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks.